Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to Interstitial Lung Disease Info. In this episode, I'd like to discuss about interstitial lung abnormalities. Again, I spoke about this in a few, a couple of previous videos, but I think it's just such an important topic. But in this one, I'd like to just narrow it down a little bit to familial cases. So where someone in the family has been diagnosed with an ILD or pulmonary fibrosis, there is a case in the family, and potentially we do chest CT scans in relatives. And in some cases, we do find abnormalities in people who have no sign of a lung disease, uh, just based on the CT scan that was done, either specifically looking for these abnormalities as a screening program or maybe having a scan for a different reason. And I did suggest before that at the moment, we are talking about um, interstitial lung abnormalities as being defined using a fairly strict definition that uses um, an arbitrary threshold, really, of 5% of abnormalities affecting any of the lung zones, so whether in the upper lungs, medium, um, medial lung or lower lungs. Basically, so whether we have more than 5%, that's considered to be an interstitial lung abnormality in someone who's not uh, symptomatic otherwise, they don't have any respiratory symptoms. And this is in people where we don't expect to find an interstitial lung disease. So it's an incidental finding. So this is a, a sort of a definition uh, and the threshold that is used standard in, in a standard uh, reporting uh, for by radiologists, by the radiologists. But then what happens in high risk groups? Do we need to maybe think about a different threshold? So I come, came across this paper that was really, really interesting. And I've, I've put a link in the description below if you want to read further. It's called Progressive Early Interstitial Lung Abnormalities in Persons at Risk for Familial Pulmonary Fibrosis, a Prospective Cohort Study. So it, it's a very interesting study that was done in familial case, uh, situations. So where someone in the family has had pulmonary fibrosis or ILD diagnosed, and then there were scans done in relatives, these patients. And then this is interesting because they also compared whether this 5% threshold is actually relevant in this patient group, because we know that this is potentially high risk group. So if someone in the family has a ILD or a pulmonary fibrosis case diagnosed, we have that uh, information, we know that relatives may have a slightly higher risk of developing ILD or pulmonary fibrosis as well. So this was an interesting study, uh, but they looked basically at asymptomatic relatives. So following up uh, relatives of people who may have had pulmonary fibrosis, they included 273 participants. Again, you can look at look these details up in the uh, description below. I've, I've put a link to the article. And then they followed up um, these people for about six years on, on average. The, the range was between three and nine years. But they were trying to determine what will happen with these abnormalities if they are found. Now, the majority of the people didn't have any interstitial lung abnormalities at the beginning of the study. So 211 patients out of the 273 uh, didn't have any interstitial lung abnormalities, but potentially they found that 15% have actually developed these or progressed over time, over the follow-up period. So that's, that's, you know, it's a potentially a fairly low number if you think about it, but it was really interesting when they looked at people who already had an abnormality found at the beginning of the follow-up period. And of course, the numbers here are quite low, but it maybe gives us an indication that potentially there is a, li a little bit of a higher risk and we need to pay attention. So in those who had mild interstitial lung abnormalities, which were, this was defined as being below that threshold that I mentioned of 5%. So just having very minimal changes on the chest CT scan, 65% had progression, but this was of course in a low number. So only 49 patients in the study, only 49 participants in the study had these minimal abnormalities, but 65% of them have had some kind of progression. So it's important then to follow these up. And in those that fit, fit the definition, it was actually a very, very low number in the study. So only 13 patients uh, had abnormalities at the beginning of the study that fit the standard definition that is used for reporting now. So that's above 5% of abnormality, 77% had some progression during the study period. So what can I make of these um, findings? So I think the first conclusion would be that even minor abnormalities probably shouldn't be ignored, especially if there is a context of a family history of interstitial lung disease or pulmonary fibrosis. And I think that's really important. This is not to worry people very much, but it's probably important to consider follow-up um, closely, because if we can determine that there is a higher risk for interstitial lung disease, potentially we can diagnose the condition early, institute treatment early, 
um, that is appropriate in that specific case. You know, this may differ from person to person. So always consult with your doctor what the right strategy might be uh, in your case, in your relative's case, and so on. So I cannot advise directly on what should be done. But basically, it's important that we are starting to recognize there is a higher risk. So if there is someone in the family who has pulmonary fibrosis or ILD, probably relatives may need some kind of follow-up or screening program. This is what this evidence is showing. Now, the problem is that we don't know what the timing of the screening and the follow-up is at the moment. This is still a little bit of a matter of controversy. It's still a little bit unclear whether we need to repeat the CT scan every year, every two years, three years, five years, this is something that is still being looked at. There are studies ongoing to try to determine this thing, or whether we need to do just regular lung function, regular clinic visits where we listen to people's chests and try to determine if there are any sounds that may suggest fibrosis is there. But it does open up a lot of avenues for investigation, for clinical reviews and what's maybe a technological solution, potentially digital stethoscopes and other things that may be coming uh, to help actually to find interstitial lung diseases earlier. Because if we find them earlier, there's a better chance to treat early when we can prevent the scarring from happening or slow it down for as long as possible. But I would be mindful of in this study because obviously it's low numbers, so 273 participants in total, so hard, hard to extrapolate to the general population but it does give us an indication that maybe in familial cases there is a higher risk, especially when we're thinking about uh, some of the people who had interstitial lung abnormalities diagnosed, found, there was a high chance that these would progress over time in the study. So whether this specific group of people had a higher risk, it's hard to say. But I think as the familial cases are more widely recognized, these numbers will ho hopefully be clearer so we can have better estimates of what might happen next. I hope this was helpful. I thought it was interesting an interesting study to report. And again, I will leave a description in, uh, I will leave a link in the description of this video so you can browse the article yourself if you want further information. And please, if you have any other questions or suggestions for future videos, I'll be more than happy to try to report. Thank you very much for, for watching and listening and all the best and good health.